Good morning, everyone. Today is the 20th of, um, of March. It's Monday and it's another weekly market analysis. Uh, my name is Pedro. I'm a senior market analyst at Alpha Chain. Hope you guys had a great weekend and let's get ahead for the for next week, which is going to be a busy one. Um, even the weekends now, they are starting to be busy with all the situations going on in the banking um, system sector. So, what happened over the weekend is that UBS just bought um, Credit Suisse for around 3.2 billion uh, dollars. Uh, the deal was uh, made over uh, over the weekend. So basically, they got it at 60% uh, discount of the of market share, um, and they end up with this deal at 3.2 billion. Uh, aside from that, the Swiss government still providing more than 9 billion to backstop um, certain losses and the Swiss National Bank is still are also providing UBS over 100 billion of liquidity to complete the deal. But now the big problem is that the deal will completely wiped out around 17.3 billion alternative tier one or contingent convertible bonds, which is also known as COCO bonds. So the question is, where are all these bonds going to and who's exposed to all this situation and who's going to be losing the money? Um, is my, the main shareholders, um, is there any any other banks uh, that's going to be exposed to this situation in Eurozone or, or whatnot? So that's going to be one of the main concerns um, now uh, to look at. Um, so, Last week, or the week before, it was CVB in the US, now Credit Suisse. Um, it's happening quite fast, all the situation. And let's see where it's going to be, um, where does it stop, or if there's going to be any continuation of new banks uh, announcing issues uh, and continue with all this, uh, with this downfall in the financial system uh, all around the, uh, the world. The market, as expected, we are in super volatile uh, moments. Uh, aside from all this, all this that is happening, uh, there's still much more going on. Uh, the inflation, as we all know, which is the main issue that the central bankers have been trying to, um, to solve. Uh, and still now a little bit of a, of a battle in between what what they should do, right? So last week, we had also Christine Lagarde announcing another 50 basis points hike in the interest rate decision for the Eurozone from 3 to 3.5%. 3 and basically, during the press conference, she mentioned that the uh, interest rate uh, or the inflation is going to, to most likely stay here and to stay for a long time um, until, so it's going to take time. Uh, for it to start decreasing to the levels that they want, which is, of course, the, those 2% target that uh, that they are looking at. Um, of course, the question was asked, uh, what's going to be the main focus of the, of the ECB? Is going to be price stability or financial stability? She also commented that in terms of the, the banks in the Eurozone, they look like they have enough liquidity, they look like they are steady, uh, and strong. Um, of course, anytime any central banker comes and says that uh, the financial uh, system is is uh, is okay and it's uh, it's in good shape, and uh, usually that's that may be actually a concern. Um, so we'll see. And nevertheless, she also mentioned that she also mentioned that uh, in case there is any kind of issues with liquidity if there's any any problems uh dcp also has uh, a few programs in place to to try to help if necessary so basically the market was a little bit hesitant nothing really much uh occurred i think literally everyone is waiting for what's going to happen next wednesday where we have where we finally have uh, the fomc meeting and which has been completely volatile in terms of what should we expect from the Fed uh, next Wednesday? Is it going to hike 25 basis points? Is it going to just stay as it is and not hike anymore? Just stay at 4.75. Um, we know that two weeks ago, it was even expected 50% or 50 basis points hike. All of a sudden, with everything that happened with the CVB, um, it, the, the bias change in the market, 
now 25 basis points as you can see in here so we keep an eye on this one it's still at this point this morning at 60 percent while it's maybe 38 percent probability of just stay at the current rate without any hikes right so this is what they are being uh, looking at is changing um foot weighting by every time that we kind of refresh this page um and this is going to be everything that everyone's going to be looking at for the Fed for the Fed meeting. Is Fed Chair Powell going to hike? And what kind of tonality and predictions and projections is going to announce? Because aside from interest rate decision, also this meeting on March, uh, the next meeting on the 22nd of March is also going to, to showcase the forecast for the next few months of what he expects from the economy, uh, from the data and where he expects the inflation to be at. And also maybe some future nuances of um, when uh, they expect inflation to be at a certain uh, rate again the target is two percent around two percent when is he expected to to do that and of course without the situation because last time we we heard from him it was when he testified in front of congress that was two weeks ago and basically one or two days after that that's when all the situation started to occur in the in the banking uh, uh, system in the in the US. So we haven't heard from him since then. Uh, so everyone's going to be focused on what he's going to to say. So the main, of course, the main event is going to be next Wednesday uh, when you have the ECB, the FOMC uh, meeting. Again, don't forget the hour is still different. It's still one hour early uh, in the US. Uh, so usually it's at 7 p.m. at interest rate and then 7.30 the press conference. At this point, it's going to be at 6 p.m. UK time and 6.30 when the, the press conference is going to to start. So that's the, of course, the main point that everyone is going to be looking at. We also have other um, central bank's decision, for example, another big point uh, is going to be interesting to see is going to be in Switzerland. Uh, what kind of interest rate decision is it going to announce? Expecting 50 basis points and as well, what kind of commentary is going to be mentioning about the credit Suisse situation and everything else that's going on uh, in there. Uh, also, we have uh, the BOE, the Bank of England, also announcing another um, Another interest rate decision, uh, expecting uh, the market's expecting a 25 basis points um, hike. Uh, before that, we also we actually have the CPI coming out in the UK, uh, expecting finally to go below the two digits number, uh, something that has been um, happening uh, above the two digits since uh, November uh, last uh, last year. So we are slowly, slowly in the UK managing to bring down the, the inflation. However, uh, there's still much more room to go to. And don't, don't forget that last week during the, the spring budget announcement, we had the the, ten, the chancellor announcing that he was expecting even by the end of this uh, year to bring this to, to, for the inflation to be at maybe 2.9, something like that, which is way too optimistic uh, in my opinion. I'm not really expecting the CPI, the inflation to go all the way back to from 10% to 2.9 just in the next uh, uh, six or seven months. Um, so yes, so this is basically uh, one of the main points uh, that we can expect for this uh, for this week. Uh, we also have CPI being announced in the in Canada, which is going to be interesting since Canada actually um, the Bank of Canada it was the first one to. Kind of stop with the hikes, so it remain uh, the same. Um, at this point, is at 4.5, and that's where it where it where it is at this point. So no more hikes at this point in Canada. We'll see in the future what's going to happen. Uh, so let's see if um, the inflation helps um, and if everything goes goes well um, in there. Um, what else do we have uh, for this week? Uh, we also have. On Friday, for example, a full PMI data, which is going to be also interesting. And it's always interesting to see uh, how well the, the economy uh, is across uh, the globe. So it starts with Eurozone and, and UK and then the, in the US. Also, the the inflation rate also in, in, um, in Japan, I think it's going to be announced um, somewhere this week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which day is it? Yeah, I think I think there will be 
the CPI in Japan as well. Yeah, there you go, national CPI. It's going to be between Thursday to Friday night, um, which again, the target is at 2%. 2 Don't forget that we have um, the governor of Japan is finishing his tenure uh, next month. Um, so let's see the big the big drop uh, that occurred last. Um, oh, the way they are spending here at, at three point this this drop that we have, um, it was due to electricity. Basically, there was another um, help from the government to help with the electricity bills. That's why that's why we are expecting this kind of big drop in the in the inflation. Uh, again, the target has been a two percent, and we have that pressure over the ten-year bonds in the, in Japan with the upper cap at 0.5%. 0 so yes, that's basically what you can have in here. Last week, we had the biggest, aside from all the situation in the, in the banking system, we had the CPI in the US, which came out as expected at 6%. Um, core CPI is at 5.5, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's it's going lower, but still not um, as well as um, as expected. And there you go. This is what we want to know from the Fed. Are we going to? Um, what's going to main point of the Fed? Is it going to be so awkward like it was, for example, two weeks ago when he spoke? It was super awkward. Uh, even maybe predicting the interest rate to go maybe all the way to six percent, not even just five point five, where maybe the market was expecting some in uh, in some moments. Uh, and now. How this situation is going to be the, um, the financial stability is going to be interesting to see what's going to to occur. So, how is the market reacting to all this situation? Right, that's kind of what you want to see. Uh, the dollar has been a little bit uh, indecised. Um, in here, we had uh, that strong move to the to the upside. Um, last week basically reacting that was basically on wednesday when you had all that sell-off happening in the eurozone um when it was kind of the first news about the credit suisse but then it just reacted from this level that actually we were looking for and uh, personally i do expect to see dollar continue to move to the downside looking at the technology uh, looking at the technical analysis in this chart we actually are looking at this kind of compression price broke this low this was a really good level to look for an attempt to to short or to see the dollar kind of reacting and moving to the downside it happened like that so it respected the level and now i think eventually we are going to, to see new lows being created on the dollar and let's see where we are going to be uh, by next wednesday when you have that ec that fomc meeting so maybe a little bit more of a room to downside on the dollar i looking at this chart alone i think that's something that um, we could expect and nevertheless don't ex don't forget that we actually had this kind of break um of all these highs in here right so we had the break it was exactly something that we predicted right I was just waiting um first of all it was to see how price would react from this level and after price eventually initially respected it but then eventually took it uh, broke to the upside um yes we mentioned that Maybe many people would start to be bullish and expecting the dollar to just to do, do something like this, right? Breaking this previous level of resistance to retest and go higher. But you actually mentioned, be careful. We may actually be close to a, a deep reversal uh, or retracement at least uh, before maybe continue continue the move the move to the upside on the on the dollar. So key levels maybe to look for this week, maybe somewhere in here, or price actually could go all the way closer to this to this level before maybe resuming the move to the to the upside. So yes, this level in here, in my opinion, it may be seen a little bit as a move higher in the future. Nevertheless, for the next few days, maybe until the Fed and the FOMC, uh, price may go a little bit lower, closer to this level, uh, maybe below these levels before before resuming to move uh, uh, upwards. If price doesn't really give any, any uh, if it doesn't really start rejecting from, from here, if you don't really manage to break any highs on the way down, maybe price will just continue to go down and maybe find the next level. Just you need to look left to try to find out maybe what's next. Uh, but for for sure, I'll be looking for some, uh, starting to see some react, some re rejection or reaction from price from here and starting to show some bullishness around that, uh, that level. Um, yeah, that's for the dollar. If you pay attention to the indices uh, in here, so looking at the S&P, 
and the and the Nasdaq. So S and P went all the way back to test this low. It was a demand zone in here created on the sixth of January. It was during that NFP data, the first one of the year. Uh, it basically closed the gap, or uh, closed the range in here that we were looking for. Um, all these spice that was um, that was done. Uh, so question mark now is where are we going to uh, next, right? So there is a big uh, kind of discrepancy at this point between the S&P and Nasdaq. Nasdaq went out, you know, at least already went all the way to test these levels, these highs in here. Well, S&P is not even moving uh, as much, so there's a little bit more bullishness on the on the Nasdaq comparing with the um, with the S&P. Uh, looking at last year, it reacted uh, last week. Sorry, it reacted really nicely from this. Um, from this level of supply and uh, this is a question mark right so we had open or we have created this gap the gap is closed it's kind of being respected again in there um so yes uh we can we are reaching a bit now in within this level uh if we do break below this low i think eventually we are going to see price maybe going all the way and feeling maybe all this price maybe going to closer to that level uh eventually or even can go a little bit lower but maybe somewhere in here uh, feeling all this all this compression zone i think that's possible but price first needs to break below this low in here on the on the s p around three thousand 700 uh, 3800 let's just call it like that um price needs to break below below that level to kind of open space for price to maybe continue to move uh to move down um in this in this zone so again s p it's okay kind of where it reacted from here and personally i would definitely like to see price going a little bit higher but it's okay where it reacted now if you take a look at nasdaq that's a different story right as i mentioned uh it's it has been a little bit more bullish, so price is reacting from here. Basically, S and P it was just still reacting from this level, so much more bullishness uh, in here. Um, price kind of paused a little bit in here in the middle. It found a little bit this level. It was also this zone in here in October, previous nice level of support resistance, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, personally, and as I mentioned, um, for me this one is a little bit of an engulf to the upside. Uh, at the same time, we kind of had seen that this was kind of had been broken. So we're looking initially for a, a little bit of a move down first, but in the bigger picture, I'm I'm actually looking for for Nasdaq to continue to move to move higher to to go at least above this high to get maybe closer to this level. So this is this level in here is where actually S and P has been reacting from, or we can even go a little bit to a little bit higher closer to that level. So at this point, we can see maybe Nasdaq even creating new highs comparing with the highs from January, while S&P may not even create new highs. Um, so this is where you can start paying attention to correlation, key levels that maybe where price has been reacting or not, and maybe where there is more space based on the different assets um, that may go to. Even though basically S&P and Nasdaq, maybe 95% of the days, they move on in the same direction. However, the length of the move, uh, it can be different. Uh, so we need to be aware of which one maybe is more bullish or, or, or less bullish, um, and maybe try to trade, maybe try to trade that one uh, if you see something like that. So at this point, he's retesting this, pre this zone of resistance uh, around 12,800. Uh, personally, again, I actually expect price to continue to go a little bit higher. We have maybe this next level in here to pay attention to as a continuation. But because of this break of a high, I would actually would like to see price going, going a little bit higher um, in here. Uh, and now if you pay attention to the Dow, right? So what was the Dow doing? Um, There you go, right? So Dow keeps fighting this level. So again, if you have been following us and watching our weekly market analysis for the last few weeks, you know that we have been bearish on the Dow for a long time. So kind of we are still kind of bullish on the Nasdaq, but bearish on the Dow. Um, even though again the correlation is quite strong in there, the, the, the levels of the moves and the strength of the moves is different. Um, and there you go, right? We are looking for this price. The target has been basically uh, reached. Uh, now there's maybe more possibility of price going down, but we mentioned so many times that we're looking for price to go below this low and have some a little bit of a reaction from this level. Uh, and finally, finally, price did that. Right, so we've been bearish since December. We also mentioned that 
with all these highs in here, there's a high probability that price could just create that uh, that move, fake out those highs, and then finally start to move to the downside. We paid attention to every single level as price was moving. When we broke those lows, that's actually when we start being completely bearish or with even more confidence. So bigger picture, we're already bearish because of these lows. And then in here, it's the timing which is important, right? To, to fine tune the timing to start looking for that, uh, for those sell opportunities and to know when and uh, when to do that, to kind of fine tune the best uh, the best trading opportunity that you could have, have have had in here. Um, so let's see, let's see what's going to happen next, right? We are within this range um, in here a little bit. So is the DAO going to uh, start breaking this high, it's going to navigate towards uh, higher from here, or it's going to keep respecting this level and eventually continue to move to move farther down um, and continue this bearishness to where it is right now. So it's something to pay attention to uh, in there. And then the DAX, right? DAX had a complete sell off uh, last week uh, on Wednesday, even a few days before that as well. Uh, so we saw that happening and we also called that move uh, as well, right? When we saw all this, uh, all this range being created around this level, we mentioned that there was the high probability or at least what price was doing, it was exactly starting to position them itself in a way that it looked like it was about to drop. Uh, we had broken these lows, open, starting to open spice, and then we just kind of literally fake out all this level of structure. And we talked about this specific level in here. As soon as this low is broken, um, there was a high probability that we could start having all that, all that move down. Beautiful zone to potentially look for an entry. And there you go. We even broke this low as well. Another confirmation, price wants to go even farther down. And there you go. You could have drawn this trend line as well to try to fine tune a good level to look for in alignment with this previous level of support, can work as resistance. And a simple way is to try to capitalize on these moves and where to, right? So there you go. This is the next level of structure. We had all these previous highs in here, and this is the demand zone that we have. That's literally where price just reacted from now. So let's see, it's just a small reaction, a small trace on price going to continue to go down. Is price now going to respect a little bit of more of these levels uh, and then continue to navigate to the downside? Uh, let's see, but all this move uh, all the way until this next level, it was a little bit predictable. And we talked about that in these last few few weeks. So that has been done as well on the on the DAX. Um, just something to pay attention to as well, of course, to see how volatile the market is starting to be, we can take a look at the VIX, which at this point is kind of uh, roughly 26 uh, level. It has already touched, kind of spiked two times here, close to 30. Um, and this just shows a little bit of the uncertainty and uh, maybe some scarcity that may start to, to, to be present in the market. Uh, last year, for example, within all this, this bearish market that we had, price never managed to go above 40. We went uh, to 38 back in, beginning of last year uh, a few times at 36 something like that a few retouches in here above 30 but we never managed to go above 40 so let's see uh, we have been again in march with all this situation we start having uh, vix spiking up again um, so paying attention to this one as well and you can maybe predict what kind of volatility we should expect in the market um, the euro index it's another one that you like to pay attention to so this is what we have, right? So we talked exactly about that. We saw the trend line as well. We have been looking for this level for a long time as well. A little bit of a bearishness in here. Um, personally, I've been looking for eventually for price to get to this uh, zone. This has been the space that we've been looking for. Of course, we were aware that this will still had respect at that moment. But this, again, a simple one. Uh, Strong move to downside. It was Wednesday again, similar to what happened on the euro and the, on the DAX and so on. The, that sell off uh, across the euro pairs and the indices. Uh, price broke those lows. Just retested this trend line or retested these lows. Beautiful level to look for another another move. Now it opened with a gap. Let's see if we even feel this gap in here. Maybe continue to move to move further down. Uh, all the way maybe towards this level. Right, so let's see what's going to what's going to happen uh, in here. Meanwhile, last week, as we saw, we had the ECB press conference, 
uh, usually around the ECB press conference, we actually have euro moving to the to the downside. Uh, however, this last week uh, it was a little bit. We press euro may still actually start to go uh, going down uh, again. Uh, however, there's a little bit more to it than just the ECB press conference that uh, that occurred, and the end pairs, right? Uh, it just continues to move higher, right? So uh, within all these uncertainties, some. Uh, some assets, assets that maybe many investors starting to to prefer to move their money into it into is uh, those risk um, risk assets where they create a little bit of an edge, and the end is one of them. Gold again, it's another one that maybe um, investors starting to move the money towards to. And let's see if crypto is also the case, right? Crypto has been behaving a little bit of as an edge as well for all this situation. Um, without the move that we have seen over the last as well two weeks or so uh out rally that we have seen so the end again moving moving higher and uh, retesting these highs uh back in january uh let's see it's actually if I'm not mistaken it's a good level in there uh, and the price respect of this supply that's a beautiful zone that's a beautiful level to to react from um let's see how price now reacts from this previous levels of resistance uh, if it just bounce from here and continues but this was a beautiful beautiful supply level in there that was still it was still fresh on the on the end right we have been moving again this is another one that you called uh, a few weeks ago the reaction from this demand zone all this compression and to move higher and let's see now our price is going to to react from here so they have been calling you, uh, providing you with some good uh, analysis uh, during this week analysis for you to take advantage of, uh, of course, based on your own trading rules and trading strategy that you that you have. So looking at the individual um, currency pairs, uh, maybe before we even do that, we can look at oil because oil with all this uncertainty also that is going on, we saw oil moving to the downside. We saw finally oil breaking all this range that has been lasting for the last maybe three months uh, or so since the, since the end of November, beginning of December, we finally broke below that level, the 71 mark, and we reached the 60, even today, this is the lowest, 64.2, right? So this is a little bit of a, of, a, of a demand in here eventually we could actually continue to move to the downside and let's see if we don't go even below these lows and let's see what's next um that you can maybe expect in here uh, maybe a little bit of a reaction uh, i don't know if price has already kind of retraced to this level maybe use again this level and continue to move down um this looked like a range right but we mentioned also that not many not managing to break this high it was always uh, kind of uh, a concern for to look for any big bullishness in, in here. Uh, this high is needed to be broken uh, to kind of start giving uh, a chance for price eventually to move higher. That never happened. This high managed to hold price all this time, and now we have all this bearishness uh, in here uh, happening. Of course, all this situation is instability, uh, fears of maybe recession or or chaos in the in the market. Um, that may just be for to to the price of oil to move to the to move down. Uh, of course, still all the situations with um, with Russia and uh, and Ukraine. If I'm not mistaken, I think the president of China is going to be in Russia um, this week. Um, kind of a strategic strategic meeting with uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, let's see what's going to happen from there and what kind of uh, um agreements are they going to have to and what's going to be the the approach from china um is it trying to find a solution for what's going on between uh, russia and ukraine or it's going to be something else that uh, that they're going to to discuss and to do so it's something also to pay attention to over this um, over this week um so yes reacting from this level we'll see what next is going to to happen in the oil market uh, the euro uh, recovering uh, after how that moved down um, last Wednesday. It respected actually a level that we had in, in here, so we haven't really broken this um, this loss. It was a beautiful demand in there, and maybe maybe can continue. Let's see, let's see how price is going to react from here, right? Price when usually actually 
when there is such a strong drop in the market, there's a tendency for price to eventually go there and maybe retest that level before before maybe resuming the move to the um, resuming the move down. Uh, we'll see. Uh, last Wednesday it was actually quite fast. There was no retracements. There was nothing. Maybe there's a chance for price to maybe get closer to this level. Interesting compression on the way up so far, uh, but let's see. Uh, any uh, there is no rules being broken so far uh, at least uh, from what i can see in here on this time frame uh, it's going to be interesting to see how price is going to react around this level um, yeah so it's going to be something to keep an eye on uh, price is kind of managing to hold uh, to stay in here and there you go maybe this move higher can lead also for the dollar to continue to move um, to move to the downside something to keep an eye on uh, pound dollar uh, it's another one uh, we had a little bit of retracement and uh, basically closed a little bit gap in here and uh, it opened last week and now it may it may continue to move to move um, to move higher we may go above this high now together uh, eventually um, so yeah let's see what's going to happen again we have boe next thursday and let's see where price is going to be uh, in there, are we going to go all the way back here to test these highs? Maybe that could be something to to, to look at. Uh, or are we going to have any kind of drop uh, in here and price kind of getting closer to this and to this level uh, in there? At this point, it looks like like that price may go higher. Uh, and again, FOMC is also going to have a big impact uh, in that one. Uh, Aussie. I was just been moving to the upside, a lot of compression. Um, interesting, interesting moves. We actually broke this level, so eventually I would like to see Aussie maybe continue to move a little bit lower. Nevertheless, midterm um, for the next few days or even few weeks, we may have uh, a move higher uh, to occur. And we are still kind of within this the, within this range, or even even as long as we kind of stay uh, below this high, there's maybe the tendency to eventually create new new lows. If we manage to break a little bit above that level, maybe we can start having a little bit of a deep retracement um, since all this bearish move that we had in the beginning of um, of February. So let's see what, what's going to happen in here in the in the Aussie. Uh, and the end, uh, as we saw, it just continues to move uh, uh, to move down. Uh, something that we were looking at as well. So now reacting from this level, uh, let's see if this is now. We, we saw the dollar, in, the the yen index that reacted really nicely from that supply. Um, the yen index and the dollar yen is kind of moving in the reverse direction. Um, so yes, let's see if from here we have dollar yen going a little bit higher or. By any chance, if you're going to continue to see this one going even a little bit far down, this is a good level, uh, personally. And then, of course, we have a little bit more um, further down, maybe another good level uh, in there. Uh, but price respected also a good high in here. So um, interesting to see if by any chance we are going to respect this level and go higher, or um, yeah, keeping keeping an eye on, keeping an eye on, uh, and see what you're going to have and how the end is going to be reacting from all this situation uh, also that you have uh, in the market. Uh, Euro Yen, it's another one. Really strong move down, a retracement, and then a, another move down. So this was last Thursday, uh, last Wednesday, sorry, a retracement and now another move down. Uh, let's see how price is going to react around this, uh, this lows. Uh, but since price actually reacted quite nicely from that level, we may actually have new lows being created in here. I wouldn't be surprised if by any chance we actually even take this these lows on our yen, on euro yen, maybe going getting closer to this um, to this level eventually in the bigger picture. Uh, dollar card, dollar card is something also that we have been uh, looking at. Uh, nice reaction from the highs in there on the. On the left side, uh, we slightly took this high in here. There's maybe a little bit more room to the upside. Uh, went all the way down to test this previous level of support resistance. That's a natural, a natural target. Uh, by any chance, if you're uh, short uh, since uh, since these highs, uh, natural target, of course, it will be somewhere in here. Uh, now let's see. Let's see which direction price now is going to uh, to move towards. To is it going to continue just to move down, or is going to uh, go a little bit higher, right? So, bigger picture, we may have all this range. We managed to retrace all the way back here 
Uh, are you going to still going a little bit higher one more time just before maybe moving all the way down uh, or not? So it's, it's something to keep an eye on as well on the on dollar cut. Uh, dollar franc Swiss, what we have. So this one in here, um, we have been a little bit bullish. We had all that retracement. We have the reaction from the double O. Um, and now let's see if price by any chance is going to approach again all this level of resistance at around 0 0.9435 or by any chance price kind of is going to navigate towards the downside, right? So we are within this range. Personally, I think we may still continue to go higher. Um, I think we can get closer a little bit more to these levels in here. Uh, or at least to test this level. Uh, but that, let's see, before that, maybe we can actually go all the way down before maybe making something like this. So we are in the middle of this range at this point. So basically uh, everything can happen uh, within within this level uh, in here. And then we have gold, right? So gold has been on a complete run to the upside uh, without the situation. We mentioned that uh, last week, if I'm not mistaken, or I, or I mentioned this one in one of the meetings where I was actually looking for more bullishness on gold. So that's that high in here had broken this level of structure. So I was looking still for gold to continue to go and navigate to the upside. Uh, the zone where it reacted in here, it was really strong, uh, reacting from this previous level of resistance support. And with this demand zone in here, it was really strong. And then the reaction as well, we had all this compression. It was a really good setup to look for a bullish scenario. And now, it was just on the way, right? So kind of it helped how the situation with the instability in the in the banking system to kind of push gold to the upside. That's basically, uh, okay, there you go, working as an edge. And, and let's see now what's going to happen, right? Even today, this morning, there's already a good, a good opportunity. This is a setup maybe that works quite nicely at right? that high, just taking a higher time frame high and then reversing. That's uh, a really good opportunity to occur. Maybe price can eventually continue to go higher. Don't forget, we have kind of this double top uh, created in here. Let's see, this is the how time highs at around 2,700, uh, not 2000, 2,070. Let's see if by any chance gold is not going to just continue. Keeping an eye on this previous level in here can work as a continuation. Um, yeah, but are we going to reach new highs on gold? Kind of that's the question. If this continues without this instability, most likely eventually gold can actually do that. And it's going to be interesting then what's going to happen next uh, in here. So this, this level in here we are looking at the weekly chart can be an interesting one to see if by any chance we are a depth continuation to the upside. If you start breaking a little bit, maybe you may have a little bit of a deep retracement, maybe price can go a little bit closer to this level before maybe continue to go higher. Again, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen um, on gold with all this, um, with all this situation. Uh, if you like volatility, gold has been providing quite big and strong moves and in order to, to trade and maybe take advantage uh, of them. So, yes. So that's for gold. Uh, and now let's take a look at crypto, right? So, and Bitcoin, we can start with, uh, with BTC, another strong move upwards uh, over the weekend. And it all started basically uh, so we had taken those highs. We mentioned we're bullish uh, on, on Bitcoin since we had basically took these highs. And nevertheless, we mentioned also that there was expected some kind of deep retracement before the continuation to the upside. It's something that happens quite often, just similar to what happened now on the on the Nasdaq, for example, um, last uh, beginning of last month. Um, and then there you go, right? Everything that started with CVB, um, rally to the upside, we tested all the back close to 26K, 500, and now we already are at uh, 28, 28K, right? So are we going to manage to break these highs? That's kind of a little bit of a question. Uh, in here, are we going to manage to reach the 30K and eventually break above this 20, 32K, something like that? around this level, or by any chance this price is going to respect this level and it's going to move down. We do have now this level of 
previous resistance that can work quite nicely as support. Not sure if price has already kind of reacted from there. I actually like it. So this level in here can, even if price retraces, this level in here can be maybe interesting to look for a continuation to the upside uh, in alignment to this previous level support resistance and that zone. Uh, so yes, let's see what's going to happen in here, right? And uh, with crypto working as an edge, Bitcoin specifically working as an edge for all this, um, for all this situation, right? So it's going to be interesting. Uh, it most likely it may, it may be affected as well uh, next Wednesday with the FOMC. Uh, but yes, this level in here, um, keeping an eye on that one to see how price is going to is going to react. And the Ethereum, uh, finally, uh, it reached from that level that I was mentioning, right? If you guys remember, I mentioned so many times that I was looking for price on the daily time frame. That was a little bit obvious. And this level is kind of supply in there. That SI never reacted from there. We had a few times price reacting from this level. Underneath this high, we even created kind of that double, double top uh, in regards to this high. But we finally had that move upwards and price reacting from from here, if you want, you can go into the over time frame. You can try to fine tune exactly uh, where price is reacting. Nevertheless, price may still continue to go higher, but it is for a reaction that was kind of expected. Um, of course, price still has now kind of this level in here to to break and below. If by any chance it wants to start moving moving down, or it's just going to continue to move to move higher, and maybe from here it can just continue to to go and navigate to the to the upside. But this was another good opportunity. That we mentioned a few times that they covered it even created kind of a double top uh, in there um, so yeah let's see let's see what's next on the on ethereum uh, and yes uh, i think there's a high chance that it can it can eventually navigate a little bit a little bit higher in, even maybe take that high and maybe get closer to that level but for a reaction this was quite obvious that you should expect should have expected some kind of reaction uh, in there all the way through the next um, just to the next level of support resistance, uh, and that will be it uh, at this point. Right? You need to manage the expectation of your own targets as well, depending on what price is showing and price is doing, and everything else in between. And that's basically it, guys, for the weekly market analysis. Right? Expect another big volatility, and another big week with loads of volatility in the market. Uh, we have uh, important data coming out. We had we have meetings. We have um, FOMC. Um, Swiss National Bank as well announcing another interest rate. We have Bank of England um, PMIs later on on Friday at the end of the week. And let's see all this instability that is going on in the financial sector. Um, let's go. Let's see how, what kind of approach is Mr. Chair Paul going to have next Wednesday. And we go from there um, again. Don't forget to keep uh, respecting and to following your own trading plan and your risk parameters, which is important. Don't be overexposed um, in these moments. Uh, stay calm, stay relaxed, and trust yourself to have um, to perform well um, during this week. Thank you so much for watching another weekly market analysis. I will see you next week. Um, wish you all of you a great, a great week. Bye bye.